Hello everyone! Welcome back to my channel. So today's drawing is an original character. It is a light nymph that I came up with. If you've been following me on my Twitter account, which I will link in the description box, you will have seen that I used a makeshift light box to take this drawing out of my sketchbook. So um, this drawing is all about learning curve and finding courage. So We'll discuss that as you go along. As usual, I start off all my drawings by drawing the flesh tone, which you can see that I put down in a nice even layer here. One of the difficult parts about this drawing, and something that I had to keep in mind, was that I wanted her hair to be a light source. Because her hair is a light source, it will cause um, different shadowings on her face, especially since she has a light source right in front of her too. So keep that in mind as you're laying down your skin tone. Moving on to one of my favorite elements of this drawing, it's her hair. So, um, I wanted to draw her hair to look like flame. So I used my kind of neon yellow color and I just put that over most of the areas except for the tips. Towards the tips of her hair, make sure that it is kind of a golden color like a flame. And then use the same effect on the flame of the candle itself. Just remember that the top of the flame is what the tips of her hair will look like. The candle holder that I was using for this was supposed to be kind of golden and shiny. So I made sure that I indicated a few areas where the light from the candle will be shining on the candle holder. And um, I used the very pale yellow for the very shiny part there. And then I used um, Leonette Gold, I think is the color. And I used that all over except for the shadow parts, which I used a variation of my dark blue and my dark brown. Also, since the candle holder she is standing on is shiny, you are going to have to put reflections on the candle stand. So um, I did that underneath the wax and underneath her feet. That will really kind of focus on the fact that it's shiny. Oh, and don't forget to put one right underneath the candle holder itself. After I worked on the reflections, I moved on to shading the candle holder itself. Um, because the little cup which holds the candle was um, slightly rounded at the bottom, I used some shading like you would use for a ball because that's kind of the shape I imagine kind of a ball type shape and so you have to sh remember that and shade as if it was that and it really adds a three-dimensional effect all right so I didn't realize that my camera was off and I drew something in which I almost immediately regretted and you can see it it's the um, yellow reflection right on the camera um, right on the candle <laughs> um, it was kind of a moment where I thought I had ruined the picture. It was the first moment that I thought I had ruined the picture. And um, I was able to go back through later, much later, and correct it. Um, I corrected it using um, white colored pencil, which really toned down the color. But I boldly continued and um, applied gray for the candle. Because the candle is in the dark, even if it was white, it would appear gray towards the bottom. I didn't want it to be completely black, as it could be in absolute darkness, because I really wanted to still convey the idea of light and make sure that the foreground was brought forward. While you were drawing your melting wax, remember that um, wax can kind of build on itself and almost look like clothing, how it folds. So. Um, don't be afraid to go through and look at reference photos of melting wax, of melted wax, and kind of get an idea of what it would look like as it comes down the candle. That will allow you to have a certain amount of realism. Since her dress is also supposed to be melting wax, I kind of mirrored the effect that I had on the candle on her dress. I'm moving on now to the background. The background is where I was convinced that I had completely ruined, beyond salvation, this picture. Dotted some of my bright yellow marker onto the page, 
And, um, and then I turned off my camera because now my work surface is on a slant, which helps my wrist, but doesn't help when you're trying to work with liquid mediums. And I turned off my camera and I then went to my flat table to work on my rubbing alcohol. So I used an eyedropper and gently dropped that on my page. So um, I had made a small mistake while putting in the background on her wrist. There's a dot of blue, so I used my gold ink and put a bracelet on her. And then I decided that that would be really cool to use um, on certain parts of the candle holder as well. So I did the stem in the gold ink and all the reflections I put in gold ink, which I really, really like the effect of that because I think it, um, when you actually hold the picture, it actually shines at you and I like that. From the first time I started this concept, I wanted the character in the background to be pushed as far back as possible, as much in shadow as possible. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to get him dark enough with my markers, so I went in with colored pencil. And um, I really like using colored pencil for this because I can control how dark, how quickly this uh, I make my drawing. So I lightly pressed on the colored pencil. I used black, brown, and um, peach. And I really kind of pushed the character back by applying shadows. I also decided that the contrast between his shirt and the blue background was a little too intense. So I went through and bl with my black colored pencil and blended those in. I also did the same effect on the table beneath them. Applying colored pencils also allowed me to blend out my character and um, make the light bubbles really pop. Finally, I went through and added final detailing. I wanted those little yellow white spheres to be as bright as possible, so I went through with my white gel pen and I put little white centers into some of them and smudged it out. And then I went through and made just some more light spheres, which were just white, and I smudged those out too. So I would go through and I'd put a little dot on and then I'd smudge it out and then I'd put another bit on and I'd smudge that out and then the final bit I wouldn't smudge that out. So it had a really nice bright effect. Here I have finished my light nymph. I want to thank you guys so much for watching. Um, if you like this video please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Bye!